Welcome everyone and thank you so much for joining me. Sorry about that uh, little bit of scrolling. I had a little uh, technical glitch. Thank you so much for joining us for the last event in our summer series. We are so excited to have you all here. And we are so thankful to the Cox Foundation that has made this free series possible. Now, I am so excited for today's session because we are going to be doing even more learning. Today, our event is about sounds, and we're going to be focusing on phonemic and phonological awareness. I know we're going to have so much fun together. And to make this event possible, we have two very special guests. And our special guests are Mr. Henry and Miss Maria. And we are so excited that they are going to share their music with us. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Henry and Miss Maria. Thank you for being here. It's such a pleasure to be here. We have a song for you. from silence. So when I play in an orchestra and a conductor wants silence, all they have to do is go like this. That's called a cutoff. Let's try it together. <laughs> Good, let's try it with Henry. today and we'll keep that in mind. Now I play percussion. Percussion is anything that is not strings, not woodwinds, and not brass. So percussion is anything you can tap, <laughs> scrape, or shake. <laughs> tap, <laughs> scrape, and shake. <laughs> Alrighty, now what's going to happen is you're going to find things around you that you can tap, scrape, or shake. You can use an instrument, stuff around your classroom or your house, or even things like your hands or your mouth, or whatever. Now take a look around as we sing this song. story today. Hmm. Now, stories are illustrated with pictures. 
And the story of a movie is illustrated with sound effects and music. So we can illustrate a book with sound. Now, remember to keep those sounds close because what's next? We're going to read a book through once. Henry is going to illustrate it with piano sounds. The second time through, we're going to read it page by page and practice with your sounds. The third time through will be our grand performance with your sounds and some of the sounds I use on the stage in performances. Ready? Here we go. <clears throat> Henry and Mudge and the wild, wild wind. This is by Cynthia Ryland and illustrated by Susie Steverson. Oh, we have the title page. And then a table of contents. You know, sometimes pages are grouped together and those are called chapters. And when we go to the table of contents, we'll find what page number each chapter starts on. Well, we're headed for chapter one, which is on page five. Ah! Chapter one is called Some Wind, and look at this. On page five, I found Some Wind. <laughs> Henry and Henry's big dog, Munch. We're playing outside one hot summer day. Suddenly, the wind blew so hard that it blew Henry's hat away. <laughs> wow, said Henry, some wind. Whoosh. Mudge's fur rippled, his ears flapped, and his eyes got all wet. Must be a thunderstorm coming, said Henry. Uh -oh. Henry didn't like thunderstorms. They made him jumpy. But they made Mudge even jumpier. Every time the storm came, Mudge did strange things. He whined, and he walked around the kitchen table about a hundred times. He sat in the bathroom and rolled. And he put his head between the couch cushions. jumpy thing Henry did was whistle a lot. <laughs> Lightning would crash and thunder would boom and Henry would whistle. He whistled jingle bells. He whistled happy birthday. The Star Spangled Banner. Now. Ready? Henry and Henry's big dog, Mudge, 
were playing outside one hot summer day. Suddenly, the wind blew so hard that it blew Henry's hat away. Now, if you have a sound for maybe hot summer, hold it up, let's see it. <laughs> and maybe something about like the wind. Now, I found this here. I just have a piece of paper that I folded in half and I go and then when it's time to blow Henry's hat away, I just flick the brim of this hat. Okay, let's practice reading this page. Henry and Henry's big dog, Mudge, were playing outside one hot summer day. Suddenly, the wind blew so hard that it blew Henry's hat away. page. Be thinking about your sounds. Wow, said Henry. Some wind. Mudge's fur rippled. His ears flapped. His eyes got all wet. Okay, I bet you've thought about your sounds. Would you hold up something if you have it for whoosh? You know, we can just use our voices. Whoosh, whoosh. Yeah, lots of whoosh. Yeah, you can do a fast wind. Your choice. Now, Mudge's fur rippled. I found some bubble wrap. What do you have? Let's see. All right. And his ears flapped. What do you have for ears? Hold that up. Uh-huh. Yeah, I got a book here with some pages for his ears flapping around. And then his eyes got all wet. What sound even? Okay, it is time to practice this page with your sounds. Wow, said Henry. Some wind. Mudge's fur rippled. His ears flapped. And his eyes got all wet. We're doing great. Next page. Must be a thunderstorm coming, said Henry. Uh oh! Henry didn't like thunderstorms. They made him jumpy. But they made much even jumpier. Show me what you have, please, for... Well, let's back up a second. You know, Henry and I, for uh-oh, we just breathe in. Uh-oh. And you're welcome to do that with us. Now, what do you guys have for thunderstorm? Anything? Maybe stomping your feet? All right. Um, let me show you my box. I put tennis balls and, uh, let's see, like a jack's ball. Here we go. And then, um, let's see, something jumpy. What made something that made Henry jumpy? All right, I'm using a metal bowl that I flick. And then for Mudge being even jumpier, what do you have? All right, I grabbed a pop lid. Now, you know, sometimes the sound doesn't happen the very first time you try it, so just try it again. And now we get to practice this page. Get your sounds ready. Must be a thunderstorm coming, said Henry. Uh -oh. Henry didn't like thunderstorms. They made him jumpy, but they made Mudge even jumpier. Every time a storm came, Mudge did strange things. Keep in mind some sounds you might want. He whined. He walked around the kitchen table about a hundred times. Now, what do you guys want to do for whine? Why don't you hold it up or make the sound like this with us? And then, um, how about walking around the kitchen table? What are you going to do? I'm going to do...
<laughs> okay, let's try this page. We're ready. <clears throat> Every time a storm came, Mudge did strange things. He whined. He walked around the kitchen table about a hundred times. Let's go to the next page. He sat in the bathroom alone. He put his head between the couch cushions. So, what do you want to do for he sat in the bathroom alone? Would you hold that up for me? Okay. Then, you know, we just say, aww, like Aww. poor Mudge. And then, um, how about he put his head between the couch cushions? What are you going to do for that? You know, I took a cushion off my couch and I'm actually going to whine into the cushion. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, you ready to try this page? <clears throat> Every time a storm came, Mudge did strange things. He whined. <laughs> He walked around the kitchen table about a hundred times. He sat in the bathroom alone. Aww. Can you put his head between the couch cushions? Next page is the only jumpy thing Henry did was whistle a lot. <laughs> Lightning would crash and thunder would boom and Henry would whistle. <laughs> now I think we'll just whistle. Um, what do you guys have for lightning? Okie dokie. I've got a couple of pot lids here. I'm going to crash them together and leave them together. And then the thunder booming. I'll use the box. You use your thunder. And Henry whistling. We can whistle. So let's try this page. The only jumping thing Henry did was whistle a lot. Lightning would crash and thunder would boom. And Henry, he would whistle. <laughs> are, we, are we ready for the next page? I think we're ready for the next page. <laughs> well, he whistled jingle bells. Spangled Banner. This is where you say not very well? Well, I was going to save it for later. I didn't want to say that so many times to you. So, let's see. What do you have for Jingle Bells? All right, you know, I found some keys. And then, um, Happy Birthday? You know, that's such a great song. I'm just going to whistle along. And then how about the Star Spangled Banner? All right, we can just whistle along. Great, let's try this page. He whistled jingle bells. He whistled happy birthday. And he even whistled the Star Spangled Banner. I still can hear you. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the next page. Be thinking. Henry knew what to do when the wild wind started. Come on, Mudge, he said, as he headed for the house. All at once, the wind blew open the screen door. <laughs> what do you guys have for heading for the house? All right, try that out. We can go like this. I'm just going to stomp on some cardboard. And then, um, how about the screen door crashing? Uh-huh. 
great. You know, I found a couple pieces of wood and I'm just going to do this. Ooh, that's pretty loud, huh? Okie dokie. Let's try this page. Henry knew what to do when the wild wind started. Come on, Mudge, he said, as he headed for the house. All at once, the wind blew open the screen door. Okie dokie. And here's the next page. Whistling and whining like crazy, Henry and Mudge ran inside. We can whistle and you can do whatever you want for whistling. And how about whining? <laughs> and um, running inside. Right. And then we might have, you know, the door uh, slamming back closed. I like that. Ooh, okay, here we go. We're practicing this page. Whistling. So excited. Let's get all our instruments close. And you guys get to make all of your wonderful sounds that you created. And I'm going to use some of my instruments that I use in performances. Ready? It is now time for the grand performance of Henry and Mudge. Henry's big dog, Mudge. We're playing outside one hot summer day. <laughs> Suddenly, the wind blew so hard that it blew Henry's hat away. <laughs> away. <laughs> wow, said Henry, some wind. Mudge's fur rippled, his ears flapped, his eyes got all wet. Must be a thunderstorm coming, said Henry. much even jumpier. Every time a storm came, Mudge did strange things. He whined. He walked around the kitchen table about a hundred times. He sat in the bathroom alone. his head between the couch cushions. Open the 
the screen door. <laughs> Whistling. <laughs> ran inside. The end. Give yourselves a round of applause! Hey, we take a bow. Yes, we get fancy. Oh, yes. Well, my dear friends, this has been very, very, very fun. And, uh, you know, sometimes, well, first of all, I have to say congratulations on your performance. Congratulations on your performance. Oh, very good. Nice. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. And thank you very much. Now, sometimes kids ask us questions after we perform a story or illustrate a book or sing a silly song or play a strange instrument. And um, so we're going to talk about some of those questions. Maybe you have one. Think about that. Well, What's one you have? Well, I'm wondering uh, what happens to Mudge. I mean, he was like kind of all sad and head between the cushions. He was. I mean, we only read the first chapter. So you... Does it get worse? I can't tell you. That would be a spoiler. You're going to make me read that long book? <laughs> you can do it. Or get a friend to help you. And yeah, and then you could read the next book in this series. You could just keep reading and reading. Well, this was the what number of the series? I think this is tenth, tenth some, something like that. I mean, there's a bunch of books about Henry and Mudge. Ah, oh, I see. You know, some kids ask us um, how to get a hold of a book. And one of the places to get it for free, of course, is the library. That reminds me, don't we have a song for that? Not yet. Or your Kindle? Yeah. You might find a PDF online, or you might go to the library and get mm -hmm. a free copy. Yeah. Um, sometimes even people have little libraries outside of their houses now. You might find a different book in there. Well, I was wondering, is Mudge a real dog? Oh, well, Henry's asking me this question because I know that he was looking in this book and found something. In the back, we have a picture of the author. Can you show them, please? Yes. And the picture of the illustrator. And you can see the author is with a dog, the top picture. And she grew up with hound dogs and cats. And she raised the kids with lots of dogs around. And so she, I think, based her stories on a lot of what she saw. I think so. They say when you write a story, which I hope you do, that you can just Base it on whatever happened to you that day or a couple days ago or whatever you might want to happen to you someday. How do you think someone goes about writing a story? Well, you kind of need some paper or maybe a computer or maybe some mud and a stick. <laughs> some chalk? Is there a right way and a wrong way to write one? Uh, no, there's, I mean, in my book, there's no right way huh, oh, or wrong oh. way. Yeah. <laughs> now, um, you know, sometimes it's fun to like think deeper about a story. So one thing you could do to kind of get into it more is think, huh, what could someone do to help Mudge feel more comfortable? Don't answer that because your own answer is correct. Any of your answers are correct to these questions. Or, huh, uh, you could write a poem about Mudge or a song. And you could also illustrate the rest of the chapters. And you could even like, Name each feeling as you came along. Mm. Or you could read outside. Anyway, this has been such a pleasure. We're so lucky to have met you guys. And I think it is time to pass this back to Yana. And I hope you guys will have lots and lots and have a really great day. Bye bye. Thank you so much, Sticks and Tones. Thank you so much, Sticks and Tones. I learned so much and I can't wait to read more about Mudge. 
I'm going to go to the library to pick up a copy of the book. And I hope everyone else does too. But now that we got to sing along and make lots of fun noises with everything around us, did we learn anything? Did our brains get smarter? Did we have a chance to do something really cool? Well, we're gonna head over to the staff at Cox campus and they're gonna tell us all about what we just learned. Wow, what a way to close out an amazing series. And I am so excited to continue the conversation here with the dream team, as I call it. We have Alistair, who is a reading and content specialist. We have Darnay, who is a birth to five facilitator, and Ashley, who is also a facilitator, but a mom as well. And so we want to continue the dialogue here. And so as we get started, Alistair, can you just take us back to the basics and set the framework for us and tell us what is phonological awareness? Yes, yeah, so phonological awareness is an individual or a child's awareness of the sound structure of words. So it's kind of a big umbrella term um, and it covers a bunch of different sub skills under it, but they're all involving the ability to identify and manipulate large and small parts of spoken language. So for example, in the video we just saw, they used percussion to turn, tune in to certain words. And there's a lot of different ways to work on developing phonological awareness, but an example um, similar to that would be um, with a child, if you had a sentence, for example, the sun is hot. It's a child's ability to hear that entire sentence, but also to identify that that sentence is made up of smaller parts of language called words. So you could use percussion, you could also clap it out, the sun is hot. So it's a child's ability to tune into those spoken parts of language. Um, and it's a really important predictor for later reading success. That is amazing. Thank you for sharing that, Alistair. And then Darnay, uh, Alistair helped to set the framework and the introduction into what phonological awareness is all about. And as a facilitator, we know that there are some end goals that we also have in mind as children prepare to go to school or they're preparing to go to, into kindergarten. Can you walk us through what the end goal is and maybe the connection of that end goal to what Alistair just shared? Absolutely, thank you, Crystal. Alistair, yes, gave us a great example of the early preschool activity of phonological awareness by identifying each separate word that makes up a sentence. From there, we will work through other sub skills under the phonological awareness umbrella. And eventually we will get to the goal, the end goal of phonemic awareness. And that's where we want our children to be by the end of the pre-K school year. So phonemic awareness is a type of phonological awareness. The phonemes are those smallest parts of sounds that we hear in a spoken word. We want children to have the ability to identify, to hear, and manipulate these phonemes or these sounds in a word. For instance, in the word dog, I am listening for each individual sound that makes up this word. So when I break this word apart, I hear d, a, g, right? And so when I put each sound and blend them together, we get the word dog. So if you notice, I'm very focused on the sounds only in the word. So it's important to know that this has nothing to do with identifying letters. Mm -hmm. It's all about what we hear. And sometimes we like to say that these activities can be done with your eyes closed. These skills, all of them under this phonological awareness umbrella are all key foundational skills that children need in order to become skilled readers later in their education. Wow, thank you so much, Darnay. So what do you say, Ashley? Are those skills or resources or activities that you're willing to try at home with your daughter? Oh, yes, of course. They sound so fun and engaging. And the information that you both shared was so wonderful. Because as a parent, I'm always thinking about ways that I can continue my child's learning at home. 
And as you stated, phonological awareness is an essential part of what my child needs to become a skilled reader. So with that being said, do you have any resources that may be helpful as I try to implement phonological awareness activities at home? That's a great question. And I'm wondering um, if we could share some of those resources that we have on Cox campus. And Darnay, are you able to walk us through a few of those resources, please? And Alistair. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, we have on Cox campus some great uh, resources. So if you haven't been on, please, coxcampus.org uh, would definitely be the place, a one-stop shop. <laughs> so our first <laughs> here is UC Yvette. Um, and she, this is a video where she's going to walk you through um, each phoneme that we have in our language. There are 44 phonemes because they're most letters, uh, some letters I should say, make more than one sound. And so she walks you through this video. And I think it's important as a parent to know and be familiar with these phonemes as you're introducing them to your children. And so you notice there's a QR code here on our screen. So if you can get those smartphones out, open your camera. And if you just put your camera over this QR code, it will take you directly to this resource. Awesome. I think we have a few others. Alistair, you want to walk us through maybe some of the, the blogs and, and readings that we have for our families? That would be great. So this, this one is a blog about phonological awareness. So is that um, how Darnay was talking about kind of that pre-skill that later leads into phonemic awareness. Um, but it is a blog post that goes a little bit more in depth in explaining phonological awareness and building phonological awareness and just kind of breaks it down. So um, same thing, there's the QR code to the left and um, you can take out your phones and it'll direct you to the blog post where you can learn a little bit more about it. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And I think we have one more that may be of interest to you, Ashley, and of course to our viewers. Darnay, walk us through playing with the sounds of spoken language. Yes, Ashley, you ask specifically for activities, right? And so this resource is something that you could take, read over, and implement at home. Um, it's very explicitly written, so it gives you kind of step-by-step um, tools and instructions that you can do. Um, and it's simple because uh, we want children to be able to have fun while they're learning. So this is one of a few other, you know, resources that we do have available that is something that you can directly use. It does walk you through those skills of that phonological awareness umbrella. Um, and it's in order of how we suggest you would introduce these skills to your children. So again, we have our QR code and um, you already know, it'll take you right there to the resource. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Thank you again for sharing. Thank you, Dream Team, <laughs> for <laughs> what you shared on here today. We hope the viewers are empowered by it. So thank you for joining us. We hope to see you again soon. Meet us on Cox campus. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye. I learned so much and I am so happy that I got to learn it with all of you. Now, everyone, I hope you know that you can join us at Cox Campus and go to coxcampus.org to create your free account to access all those resources that we just heard about and so many more. Everything at Cox Campus is completely free. So a huge thank you to the Cox Foundation for making that possible. Thank you everyone for joining us this summer. I hope you had fun learning and dancing and playing and making music. And I hope we will see you next summer. <laughs>